Okay, right here is a 2005 Terex ONK RH120E. The RH120E was first introduced by ONK in 1999 as a replacement for the older RH120C model and became one of the most successful of ONK's mining class of hydraulic excavators in terms of sales. The RH120E was available from ONK in either front shovel or backhoe configuration, depending on what the customer preferred. In backhoe configuration, the RH120E was designed to swing a rock bucket ranging anywhere from 19.6 to 22.2 cubic yard capacity. In front shovel configuration, the RH120E was designed to swing a bull clam ranging anywhere from 17.7 to 21.6 cubic yard capacity. Right here you can see where the two bucket cylinders connect to the back of the bucket to curl the bull clam in or out. And if you look up top under the boom, you can see where the two stick cylinders are located to push the stick in and out. The RH120E was equipped with ONK's cutting edge tri-power linkage technology, which consisted of the rotating triangular piece of steel, which is mounted to the side of the shovel boom, and connected to it are the bucket cylinders, the hoist cylinders, and the tri-power link rods. What the tri-power linkage does is it helps keep the digging geometry of the bucket at a constant position throughout the entire digging cycle which gives the RH120E up to 50% more crowd force by allowing the use of four cylinders instead of two to increase the force applied to curl the bucket. The benefit to this is the tri-power linkage helps prevent reverse bucket spillage and increases bucket fill factor by as much as 115% in certain applications. Another benefit to the tri-power linkage is that the tri-power link rods transfer all the stresses generated from the digging cycle down to the front of the machine superstructure. This action forces the front of this excavator down, which thus prevents the RH120E from being pushed backward when the machine goes to force its bucket into a bank of material. Thirty-nine-inch general-purpose crawler shoes were standard for the RH120E. However, ONK also offered optional narrower 31.5-inch crawler shoes and wider 47-inch crawler shoes depending on the type of ground conditions that the machine would be working on. The RH120E featured a redesigned layout of the bottom rollers on each crawler frame to reduce face pressure. The RH120E has two travel speeds, 0.87 miles per hour at low travel speed and 1.68 miles per hour at high travel speed. And to help give you an idea of the size of an RH120E, this excavator measures 24 feet 11 inches tall from the ground to the top of the operator's cab and 23 feet wide.
Now, let's go up on top of the RH-120E. Let's check out the engine room on this excavator first. Just like its predecessor, the RH120C, the new RH120E was designed as a twin-engine excavator, available from O&K with either Caterpillar or Cummins Power, depending on what the customer preferred. And as you can see, this particular unit is Caterpillar powered. The Caterpillar engine configuration for the RH120E consisted of twin C18 turbocharged and after-cooled inline six-cylinder diesel engines that develop 1400 horsepower for this machine. You can see the left side engine right here and if you look over here on the opposite side here you can see the right side diesel engine and mounted directly ahead of both engines are the engine radiators. The Cummins engine configuration for the RH120E consisted of twin QSK 19C turbocharged and after-cooled inline six-cylinder diesel engines developing 1350 horsepower for this machine. And for customers who preferred an electric hydraulic machine, O&K offered the RH120E with straight electric power, powered by a single 1000 kilowatt squirrel cage induction motor. Each engine on this machine drives three hydraulic pumps on each pump drive, which consists of two variable displacement swash plate main pumps and one reversible swash plate swing pump. The pumps cross feed and the RH120E's pump management system, or PMS for short, will pull additional oil flow from two or four pumps based on demand from joystick position and load. The PMS does this by continually measuring the actual values of the engine output and hydraulic system and compares these values with stored target values, thus permitting improved pump precision. And the benefit to this is virtually no power loss, lower oil temperatures, and increased fuel savings. And from right here you can get a good view of the hydraulic system on this machine. Mounted in the center of this machine, in between the two diesel engines, is a 660 gallon hydraulic oil reservoir tank, which you can see right here. The swing system on the RH120E consisted of two compact planetary transmissions with axial piston motors that power the closed loop swing circuit with torque control for minimal energy consumption during acceleration and energy recycling during braking. Mounted on the right side of this machine is the hydraulic oil cooling unit which you can see right here, 
Hydraulic cooling on the RH120E is completely independent from all main circuits. And right here you can see where the boom pins to the superstructure on this machine. Inside of this compartment, which is located directly below the operator's cab, is the electronic room. Let's go inside and check it out. Inside of this box that you see mounted on the wall is where all of the computers, relays, and electronics are located to work this machine. Okay, now let's go up top. From here you can get a good overview of the top deck on an RH120E. You can see the two sets of air intakes and air cleaners, one for each diesel engine, and you can see the covers over the tailpipes and mufflers. These two big red canisters that you see mounted on the top of the machine's counterweight are for the fire suppressant system. And this big box that you see mounted on the top center of the machine's counterweight is a tool storage cabinet. Right here you can see the grease tank for the central lubrication system, which holds 120 gallons of grease. The main valve block and control valves for the front attachment are mounted on the boom of the RH120E, which allows for more workspace and better access to the swing motors and center joint below. Now, let's go inside and check out the operator's cab. From here, you can get a good overview inside the operator's cab of the RH120E. When ONK engineers were designing the operator's cab for the RH120E, they increased the overall cab width by some 12 inches. And this beautiful cab was designed exclusively for ONK's mining class of hydraulic excavators. Okay. These two foot pedals that you see directly out in front of the operator's seat control the travel functions on this excavator. Each foot pedal controls each individual track. This third foot pedal that you see over here, off to the left side, controls the bull clamp functions. Push forward to open the clam and push back to close the clam. The two joysticks that you see off to the right and left side of the operator's seat control all the digging functions of the front shovel attachment in the front, or if this machine were set up as a backhoe. The RH120E features ONK's board control system, which you can see right here. The digital display screen that you see provides real-time information to the operator on the operating status of this machine and will also alert the operator in case of a malfunction. Down below you can see gauges to monitor this machine when it's in operation. 
and all of the switches that you see on the control tower right here control the left side diesel engine, the right side diesel engine, and you can see other control switches to work other various functions on this machine, such as for the front headlights and windshield wipers. And from right here, you can get a crystal clear view of what the operator would see if he were running an RH120E. Located directly behind the operator's seat is a trainer's seat, which you can see right here. Mounted below each diesel engine, alongside of the machine's superstructure, are two 1416-gallon diesel fuel tanks. You can see one right here, and the other is on the opposite side. And this is what supplies the engines with fuel. The RH120E features a centralized service fluid filling station and this hydraulically powered drop down that you see right here is a plug-in for the fuel man to fill this machine with service fluids such as diesel fuel, engine oil, grease or coolant directly off of here without having to take the fill lines up on the top deck of this machine. And from under here you can see where the two travel motors are located one on each crawler frame and this is what will propel each individual track. And on the right and left side of the counterweight you can see the two vents for the engine radiators. And the overall operating weight of an RH120E in front shovel configuration, as you see right here, is 313 tons. In backhoe configuration, the RH120E weighs in at 316.4 tons. In December of 2009, Terex announced it would sell its mining division to Bucyrus International, and by February of 2010, the deal was complete. In mid-2010, during the Bama trade show in Munich, Germany, Bucyrus introduced an improved version of the RH-120E, flying the Bucyrus International colors that featured an all-new Caterpillar engine configuration. Replacing the smaller C-18 diesel engines were twin C-27 V-12 diesel engines capable of producing 1,530 horsepower to maximize the machine's performance. However, the O&K excavators would not fly the Bucyrus colors for long. In November of 2010, Caterpillar announced it would acquire Bucyrus International, and by mid-2011, the deal was complete, and the former RH-120E was renumbered the Caterpillar 6030. But there she is, the most successful O&K hydraulic mining excavator in terms of sales, the RH-120E.